I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 239. How did I let myself get here? Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. Get ready to learn how to live in your dream body, free from all the diet rules. You're going to learn the naturally thin mindset and strategies so that you never need to count, track, or measure your food ever again. And instead, you get to live the rest of your life at your body's optimal weight with the peace and freedom you've been craving. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to this week's podcast episode. I want to share with you how to approach those times where maybe you're a little down on yourself, feeling a little bummed out, getting a little mad at yourself or frustrated, thinking like, how did I let myself get here? How did I let it get so bad? How did I let myself gain this weight? And I think we all have those moments. (laughs) At least I know I have had many of those moments. Most people that I talk to about losing weight have also had these moments. And so I just want to share with you how you can approach when you're feeling this way so that it doesn't turn into a shame and regrets and kind of guilt spiral that often ends up in overeating and making yourself feel even worse. And yes, before we dive in, I am getting over a cold. So I have a little bit of a raspier voice today. My little kids were like, why do you sound like that? <laughs> like, it just it's kind of what happens when you are a little bit sick. So I think, like I was saying, we've all had those moments where we're just like so defeated and so like mad at ourselves. I've shared this story before of being on this trip with my husband where we went to a Green Bay Packers game and I, for whatever reason, decided to weigh myself. I hadn't been weighing myself, but there was a scale in the Airbnb we were at and I remember weighing myself and it was, you know, maybe 15 or 20 pounds more than than I thought it was or I thought it should be. And I had been not weighing myself and simultaneously like doing all the things that I thought were right to lose weight. So I was like doubly surprised because I thought it was going to be way less than I thought what I had been doing was causing me to lose weight. But I was not, I was not pleasantly surprised. I was quite disappointed. And I just remember sitting on the bed And just thinking to myself, like, how did I let it get like this? How did I let myself regain this weight that I've lost like 15 times before? And like, how did I let myself get here again? And I just was so upset and I was so mad at myself and I was so devastated. And it doesn't matter if you think this after you've gained five pounds or 10 pounds or a hundred pounds or more. When you are in this space, you often feel just so down on yourself and you're often filled with shame and regret and guilt. And then what can often happen that I know I've definitely done many times before is that we can turn to extreme measures to try to stop feeling the shame and the regret and the guilt and the defeat and the devastation. Because we think, well, if I lose the weight, then I won't have to feel this way anymore. I won't have to be so mad at myself. I won't have to be so bummed out that I let myself get here. But when you turn to extreme measures, they're usually not sustainable and they don't last. And what happens then is really you're trying to escape you being so mad at yourself, you feeling that shame and you feeling that regret, rather than really doing what's required to match your brain and your body's desire for food. So if your motivation to lose weight and your motivation of using some extreme measure is so that you won't have to feel shame or you won't have to feel regret or you won't have to feel so defeated about the number on the scale, then what you're not doing is you're not retraining your brain to have a desire for food that matches your body. And that really is what creates the peace and the freedom and the ease of eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're satisfied, and easily choosing food that serves you. And so if that's not what you're working on, that will not be what you achieve. And therefore, turning to an extreme measure will be sustainable and it won't last. And it often, for most of us, leads to restriction and overeating. And it can actually make this cycle worse long term. Because even if you turn to some extreme measure, you're feeling so bad about having gained weight, let's say, or you're feeling so bad about maybe when you see your reflection 
I used to just try on clothes and watch myself put on something that used to fit with a button and it had no give. And I remember putting it on and being like, what? This used to be like a loose. Now I can't even put the button on and I'd be so pissed at myself. And really underneath that anger, I was just very sad and I was just felt so defeated. And then, you know, turn to the extreme measure. But then what happens long term is we turn to these extreme measures to try to get out of the shame, regret, guilt cycle. And we don't recalibrate our brain's desire for food to match our body. And then we lose some weight by whatever we're doing, whatever diet or whatever extreme measure or strict protocol we're following or intense exercise, whatever we're doing. We lose some weight, but then it doesn't last or we're driving ourselves crazy doing it. And then what happens over time is we can start to buy into the lie that the only way that you can lose weight is with extreme measures because you haven't ever lost weight any other way because that's the cycle you're stuck in. So then we start to think, okay, well, my options are either lose weight with this torturous method that I don't want to live with forever or just give up and be unhappy about my weight. And so for many of us, I think there are times where we find ourselves in this point where we're like, this is a lose-lose situation. Either I have to diet and be a crazy person forever in order to lose weight and like meticulously track everything I eat, or I'm just never going to be at the weight I want. And so when you're in this cycle of being so mad at yourself and feeling shame and regret and guilt, and then turning to an extreme measure and like, just, you know, the hamster wheel that this is, it compounds the problem rather than actually focusing on the solution. And so if and when you ever find yourself in this headspace, I want to offer you this approach that I'm going to share with you now so that you can get out of this really defeating hamster wheel cycle. And the first thing that is most important when you're just thinking to yourself like, oh, like how did I let myself get here? Is that you accept where you are today. And I am not saying it is like, oh, I'm condoning, you know, all the choices that I've made and it's totally fine, right? You're not telling yourself, oh, it's fine when you don't think it's fine, but you are coming to the realization that this is your body today. This is the reflection in the mirror today. This is your body weight today. This is simply where you are today. And it's not just this sense of acceptance of this is where I am today, but it's this is where my body is today because that is the fact, that is the reality where your body is today as far as number on the scale or your reflection, like that is where it is. Trying to tell yourself that it should be less pounds or trying to tell yourself it should look more trim in the mirror is only going to create more and more of the diet hamster wheel cycle. And so when you can remind yourself, okay, this is where I am today. And also, I am figuring this out. I will figure this out. I'm going to figure this out so that I have this skill for life, so that I can easily live in my dream body. So for me, what was most beneficial when I had these moments was like, okay, here's where I am today. Now what am I going to do about it? And not now what am I going to do about it and turn into a crazy obsessive dieter. Now what am I going to do about it so that What I do now is something that will move me closer to living in my dream body with ease. That is the goal. That was my target. And it's really important to also, when you're doing this, to have that acceptance, to focus on, yes, I'm going to figure this out and I'm going to figure this out. You want to define what does this mean for you? Like I said, for me, this means I want to live with ease in my dream body. And then you want to take action steps towards that goal. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to understand why you have overeaten. Why did you let yourself put on the weight you put on? And not from a judgmental, shameful place. You're not answering this question by berating yourself. You want to answer this question really objectively and honestly as if you were simply watching another human that you had no kind of connection to or no relationship to, you'd be like, oh, okay, so they overate because this reason, this reason, and this reason. You want to understand why you have overeaten. Why did you maybe regain weight? Why have you gotten to the weight you are at? 
So when I thought about this for me, I would think like, okay, well, I've overeaten because I wanted a distraction from my anxiety. I overate because maybe I didn't want to feel lonely. You might have overeaten because you're really stressed at work and you thought food was a good escape from the stress at work. You may have overeaten because you didn't know how to listen to your hunger. For me personally, I was always so used to feeling full and I was not familiar with what it felt like to feel lean and energized in my body. And so when I was like, okay, why do I think I've put on some weight? Why do I think I've gained weight? I remember thinking, I just have never really experienced what it feels like to eat a meal and still feel really good. I just thought full was was the goal and never realizing that I could feel really great both before and after I've eaten. And, you know, for me personally too, I overate when I was pregnant with my my first child. I was so kind of overwhelmed with the discomfort that I was experiencing while being pregnant. And so I overate as a distraction mechanism and to try to not feel as uncomfortable. And I thought food was the solution, but turns out it wasn't. And then, you know, maybe for some people, they keep that pattern after they have kids. So you want to just understand for yourself, okay, why have I overeaten? Why have I gained weight? And you want to keep it really basic. Is it because I'm not allowing myself to get hungry in the first place? Am I fearful of my hunger? Is it the types or quantities or combinations of foods that I'm choosing? And or is it my satisfaction level? Am I not even allowing myself to experience how great I can feel after a meal because I keep overly putting food in my mouth? And is it because of a particular emotion? Am I trying to escape anxiety? Am I trying to escape restlessness? Am I trying to escape stress? Like, what is it? And when you think about it in kind of those four categories, your hunger, the food, the satisfaction level, and an emotion then you can see much more objectively for yourself like, oh, it makes sense that I put on 25 or 30 pounds. It makes sense I put on two pounds. It makes sense I put on 100 pounds. I've been doing this for 20 years. And when you do that, it allows yourself to see, okay, it makes sense that I put on this weight. And therefore, because I understand why, then I understand that there is a solution. You want to see how the reasons that you aren't at the weight you want yet is because of choices that you made and that you can change them. And not only that you can change them with some forceful restriction diet thing, but that you can actually change them by changing the way that you think about your body, by changing the desire that your brain has for food so that it will match the innate desire that your body has because your body wants you to feel as optimal as possible. And when you take a minute or more minutes (laughs) to do this, then what happens is you don't live in that like doom and gloom and thinking I can never make a change and I'm never going to get there and I have so much weight to lose and this is going to feel, you know, and be bad and terrible forever and all the things that a lot of us tell ourselves when we're in that headspace of just feeling so bummed out, thinking like, how did I let myself get here? And when you're in this process of simply accepting where you are today, remembering that you are figuring this out and you do figure this out and reflecting on why you did gain weight and why you are at the weight that you are at, sometimes it can feel a little kind of like gut-wrenchingly honest in in a little bit of a painful way because there's this realization that the reason you are at the weight you want is the compound effect of choices that you've made. But It's like that gut-wrenching realization that's a very powerful realization because you feel this sense of responsibility where you understand that like, yes, I am the one that's made these choices. This is why I'm at the weight that I am today. But when you see that it's a result of the choices you've made, And you see that there's another path to make different choices. And you don't need to know exactly all the minutia of exactly how you're going to do that, right? You can even think about like you have so many resources here on this podcast to start to move closer and closer towards your naturally thin self. So whether you listen to every episode until now, or this is your first episode, you can think, okay, 
there are options for me to make different choices. And you untangle your weight from it having to do with your worth or that there's something inherently wrong with you. When you feel this sense of responsibility for the choices that you've made in a more objective way, like I said, not making it mean that there is something wrong with you or not making it mean it has anything to do with your worth, but you're like, this is why it makes sense that I am at the weight I want. You can feel this like internal fire start to light versus when you're living in the land of thinking there's something wrong with me, I can't figure this out, I should have never let it get this bad, I'm not as desirable or I'm not as lovable where I am today as I think I'll be You know, when I've lost weight. When you're in that headspace, it's really hard to lose weight in a way that feels good in your body. And the internal motivation long-term just isn't there when you're trying to lose weight from a place that is really like defeating and you've all you've already like felt defeated and then you try to use that as your motivation. It just doesn't work. So when you haven't accepted where you are today, it's just really important that you remember, okay, this is where I am today. This is what I'm figuring out for myself in the future, right? And really set that goal, set that target with a clear intention. And then why am I at the weight that I am today? And then you want to decide some next steps for yourself. And I would just think about one to two next steps. What do I want to focus on? Maybe you just want to focus on getting to know your hunger, allowing yourself to feel hunger and knowing and having a friendly relationship with hunger. Or maybe you want to focus on not eating as much in the evenings. Like just pick one thing that you want to focus on and remember why you're making that change and make sure that the action steps you're taking and the mindset work you're doing is in alignment with what you want long term. It's not something that you're doing temporarily because not only will it not last, I really do think that it makes it harder and harder over time because then it just allows our brain to gather so much evidence about how hard it is and how it's not for us. And then we end up back in this place, like, how did I get here? How did I let it get so bad? And it keeps that cycle perpetuating. It keeps it going. And the last thing I want to say with this is you just want to be on the lookout to if you ever notice your brain saying or thinking like, I just got, I got to prove this, like with this like gusto, like really intense pressure telling yourself that you have to prove that you can do this to yourself. To me, that's another version of turning to an extreme measure. And it doesn't usually lead to really getting to know your body in a way that you have a lifelong skill of losing weight and keeping it off with ease. So if I'm telling myself, I got to prove this to myself, I got to prove I can lose these 20 pounds that I put back on. I'm not usually then like, oh, okay, today I'm going to let myself allow my body to get hungry and really develop an ease-filled relationship with my hunger cue. I'm more like, okay, I got to force myself to be hungry today and I'm not going to eat so I can see the scale go down. Right? And it can almost feel like we're like motivated and we have that fire burning, but it's more like a, a quick flame that's going to go out versus a long lasting flame that's going to stay. And so I have done this many times before. And the ironic thing and the magical thing to me and just the most amazing part of all this is that I actually weigh less at my naturally thin weight than I ever thought possible by working with my body, not trying to force it into submission. Your body wants you to live at your naturally thin weight, at your ideal weight. And for many people, it's actually less than they even realize. And I'm not talking about being underweight or forcing your body to lose more weight than what is healthy or where your body actually wants to be. I'm, of course, not talking about that. But a lot of people are surprised at how light their body actually wants to be when they work with it. So you just want to notice if you ever turn to like this pressury, like, kind of intense motivation that can sometimes feel like, yes, I am going to figure this out and I am going to do this. 
And there's a difference between pressure-filled motivation and just that like strong internal fire that you know you're going to do this and you know you're going to figure it out. And you're not doing it to prove it to anyone else. You're doing it because you want to, because you are excited and motivated by feeling incredible in your body. There's a very big difference in saying to yourself, I got to prove to myself that I can lose these 20 pounds. I got to prove to my friends and family at the upcoming wedding that I am, you know, 20 pounds less than today or 50 pounds less than today. That's very different than I'm doing this for me because I want to have this lifelong skill and I'm so internally motivated by my desire to feel really, really, really good in my body. So, Anytime, my friends, that you find yourself feeling bummed out about maybe where you are today in your relationship with your food and your body, whether that's your reflection or the scale or when you try and close or any time that you notice that, you want to remember acceptance. This is where my body is today. That doesn't mean I'm telling myself it's fine and I'm not going to do anything. It's just this is where my body is today. And I know I'm figuring this out. And then you define what this is. Like I said, for me, it was always, I want to live at my optimal weight and have a very easy relationship with food in my body and not think about it all of the time. And then you want to understand, okay, why am I at this weight today? And then once you've done that, focus on one to two. I wouldn't even think about any more than two changes that you are working towards and make sure the motivation that you choose is in alignment with your naturally thin self, that the motivation you choose to lose weight is the same motivation you're going to have to keep the weight off. So for me, the motivation to lose weight, to feel really good and love how I feel in my body and not think about it all of the time is the same way that I keep it off. It's the same motivation. I still love to feel really good and not think about food and hunger all of the time and not have this obsessive relationship. And that internal motivation to want to feel good compounds and compounds and compounds over time. So it isn't just something you experience as you're losing weight. It then just becomes the habit and the way that you automatically think that allows the weight to stay off and allows you to have that ease-filled relationship. And if you are enjoying this podcast and you get a lot out of these episodes, I would love it if you could take a minute to write and leave a positive review wherever you listen to the podcast, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, or somewhere else. Every time you leave and write a positive review, I first of all read every single one, but it also helps wherever you listen to the podcast know to suggest the podcast to other women like you so that more and more of us can live in our dream bodies without feeling so bombarded with all of the overthinking and the overanalyzing and all of the frustrations that so many of us have experienced while trying to lose weight, so that more and more of us can have this ease-filled relationship with food in our bodies that we've always wanted. So thank you for taking a minute to write and leave a review wherever you listen to this podcast. I will talk with you all next week. Hey friend, if you're enjoying the podcast, I invite you to come and check out the Naturally Thin for Life membership at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join, where you'll learn the full Naturally Thin method broken down into simple and doable steps so that you lose the weight you want peacefully and rapidly and keep it off with ease for the rest of your life. The Naturally Thin for Life membership provides you with the tools to not only lose the weight you want, but customize your mindset and your habits to your unique body and life. As part of the membership, you also get an implementation workbook to ensure your inevitable success. Head over to naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join to get an inside look and tour of the Naturally Thin for Life membership. Hear from countless women who've utilized the tools and the extraordinary successes they've been able to achieve. I hope you join us over there at naturallythinforlife.com forward slash join.